Woods. Um, right, well, we're talking about measurement in this session, as you well know. And um, to kick it off, I'm joined by Ian Whitaker, who is a media and tech analyst and the founder of Liberty Sky Advisors, and he's the one sitting nearest to me, and Andy Brown, who is CEO at the Attention Council and a former CEO and chair at Cantar Media. Now, um, they co-authored a paper that was published on the Media Leader yesterday um, about how TV networks can capitalise on the digital stumble. And that begins by looking at the rush of investment into attention, well, not attention, measurement and research companies. Um, and Ian estimates that two and a quarter trillion dollars um, of advertising is wasted. Um, and that, that is depressing shareholder value right across the media industry, um, due partly to a lack of unified cross-media measurements um, that ha advertisers are actually happy with. Um, it goes on to offer some of the solutions to how we unlock the growth that that kind of infers, including cross-platform improvements, it looks at attribution and attention, but the real focus is on cross-media measurement as the big goal. Um, I mean, the sort of the takeaways I would get from it, I mean, obviously Ian's estimation of waste and therefore the growth opportunity that that infers that we can unlock. Um, the idea that the industry has reached an inflection point where measurement now becomes kind of growth critical. Um, growth from now on is really closely linked to measurement, especially as so much growth is in digital. And um, that uh, the TV networks have this big opportunity to win through cross-media measurement, despite the fears that they may have about it. So, um, so we're gonna dive into all of that now. And um, so welcome, first of all, both of you. And Ian, so let's start with these private equity figures, mm. the investment that's piling in. I mean, tell us what's happening and why that's happening. So I think if you, if you actually look at the whole measurement space at the moment, so you, as you mentioned, you've had go, the likes of Goldman Sachs, for example, get sort of it, been involved in, in measurement. You've had Nielsen been the big deal that took place. I mean, this is something that's been going on for a couple of years. I, private equity took a 60% uh, stake in Kantar's business as well. Um, there's a couple of things which I think are, are, are very much driving that. One is obviously in terms of, of, I think specifically streaming and the fact that the streaming services are getting into, sort of getting into the advertising field. That has definitely raised attention, um, sort of certainly brought it to, to many people's attention. I think second of all, what you mentioned in terms of the whole thing that measurement at the moment is the hot topic. Any hot topic always get financial investors coming in because they're thinking about the long-term value. And again, this, is, you know, this has been something that has been prevalent for a couple of years. Back around, probably around seven or eight years ago, KKR actually bought, sort of, of led a buyout of GFK, sort of in Germany as well. So it's been something that has been going on for a while. I think the, the three things that sort of, I think are particularly sort of, of interesting in this whole space uh, and, and sort of what's happening sort of now, um, one it is just in the fact that you've got, as it were, the boundaries between various parts of media are coming down. So if, for example, I look at, at television, sort of the way at the moment it's bundling together linear TV and BVOD, sort of a uh, personal view is that's a mistake. Understandable one, it's defensive, it's needed to protect the linear audiences. But actually there's a big opportunity there for the, for the broadcasters in particular to really think about what their core competency is. And realistically, it should be more not sort of uh, broadcasting in a linear fashion, but actually video distribution. And that opens up sort of a variety of streams of revenues. And it's particularly sort of relevant now, given the fact that what you've got is you've got social media networks sort of are suffering and increasing sort of doubts about their longer term growth. I think the second thing also as well that measurement is playing into and why people are getting involved is, as you mentioned on shareholder value, the loss of shareholder value, there's a huge amount uh, of shareholder value is mentioned in that figure. One, um, one thing just to say on that figure, that 2.25 trillion, um, th that was used what we call in, the, in financial analysis a discounted cash flow model. Yeah, I know in advertising a lot of people use return on investment. In financial markets that would be very rarely used metric because it's actually quite poor. And, and particularly when you look at it for brand advertising, it's completely unsuited as well uh, on there. But the point being is that sort of, of what people recognise is that, that a lot of money has been wasted sort of, and it's been misspent at the moment. And potentially, if you can make that sort of situation even a little bit better, there's potentially a lot of gains to be had. The third thing I'd say, and it's maybe not so much why, why sort of private equity firms are, are, are getting involved, but I think it is an important point just to emphasise, is that very much of this debate, certainly from an outsider standpoint, it is sort of driven around really the needs of the intermediaries, not necessarily the end customer who's the advertiser. 
uh, on the back of this. And if I think about, if I think about the financial markets, I mean, I was a 20 years an equities analyst uh, in the city, and what you had there was that all the rules are very much sort of based on what was the best result for the end consumer. Yeah, and that led, for example, commissions on trades slumped, really sort of brought in by electronic trading and so forth. Yeah, if I, if I look at the debate, sort of what goes on here, you know, what's going on with Project Origin, what's going on with, with sort of variety debates, it all seems to be about sort of, of the intermediaries protecting themselves and their own interest. Again, understandable, but what does that mean for the end customer who's the advertiser? And how much money are they wasting and therefore how much shareholder value are they wasting? Okay, and one other figure from your paper was the TV opportunity to sort of broken down, and you said it's 50 billion a mm -hmm. year for broadcasters in mm -hmm. the medium term, based on 10% of online spend moving over, excluding search. Yeah. Okay. So that that was based on, on the Group N numbers. Uh, that was uh, that was over the longer term on there, and again, it sort of comes back. It comes back to this point. If you look at, at yeah, if you look at what the opportunity is for the broadcasters at the moment. We're in quite a sort of interesting time because you know, social media has so much in terms of revenue generation. Facebook generated last year around $120 billion of ad revenues. You know, so add on top of that what Snap will do and everyone else will do. That's a huge pot of money. There is now starting to be sort of cracks appearing in the idea that that model actually works. Now potentially what that could mean is a huge amount of money up for grabs. My message to the broadcasters would be is that actually there is a big opportunity for, here you, for you to take some of that money. You know, you are essentially your core competency is video, producing sort of premium content. You don't have to define it as long form content, it could be short form content as well. Yeah, there's a lot of ad money for you to take. The problem is, I said, and I think it's where it comes sort of on the whole measurement side, is that the broadcasters don't want to do that. You know, as I say, said before, the thinking at the moment is very much sort of defensive rather than, rather than the offensive it needs to be. But yeah, that $50 billion, that's a global figure, but just gives you an idea of scale of the opportunity. Yeah. Okay. So, Andy, I mean, you're adamant also that cross-platform, however good it is in terms of combining broadcast TV with streaming, if we even if we solve that measurement, it's not enough if they want to target this part. So, just talk us through what you think needs to happen. So, I, I, I'd agree with obviously it. Here's why I co-wrote the paper with Ian. I'd agree with an awful lot of what he said. Um, but from a measurement point of view, you could. There's so many subtitles. This this paper could have had. It could have been, you know, why TV networks need to be braver uh, when it comes to measurement. Because actually, the paper, if you read it, talks about three A's. Uh, it talks about audience measurement, it talks about attention measurement, and it talks about attribution. Uh, all three of those, I actually think, can work to TV networks' favour. Um, firstly, you know, it's not to say that on the, the work that's being done today, uh, around TV measurement, initiatives like c are not valuable. They are. Um, but you're not really answering the question that the examiner asked you. If the advertiser is the examiner, yes, they are interested in, in what Linear Plus, BVOD or CTV, depending on which part of the world you're in, generates in terms of uh, a combined reach. But they're also desperately interesting, interested in and asking about what does television look like uh, against YouTube and other forms of digital video and and I think it's time that you know networks got a little bit brave uh, around that I, and by the way John I wouldn't say you, you slipped in a word there or a comment <laughs> where you said uh, of any quality not of any quality it needs to be high standard it needs to be independent it needs to have third party validation um, so it's not any uh, cross screen measurement it needs to be done well but I think it's I think television will stand up well in that context. I, I applaud what Isbar is doing with Project Origin. Um, I think that it'll be interesting to see what happens. My, my guess is what will happen with Project Origin uh, is that the data will come out um, and agencies and networks and to the extent to which they have access uh, and advertisers will run enormous amounts of reach and frequency. They'll knock themselves out for the first month doing un unbelievable numbers of re reach and frequency analyses. And they'll create some normative insight around whether there's over frequency, where that over frequency is, and whether we should be reinvesting uh, the money that's set against that over frequency in different channels. And then the next question is going to be after about 
four weeks of six weeks of doing this analysis, is what is the value of a television impression versus a digital video impression? And I think it's at that point that the other two pieces that I talk about in the article uh, come into play. So, and I'm a little bit biased in this, and I hands up, I my part of my role uh, is to promote the use of attention metrics uh, in media. Uh, and I think if you actually look at the data that's been published, I can see Mike Follett there. Yeah, um, Andy, <laughs> <on>. okay, <laughs> it's always good to have your own cheerleader. I take Mike everywhere I go. Um, <laughs> Um, but, you know, if you look at the data, the, you know, particularly there was a report, if you've not seen it, um, that was done with Lumen and done with um, the good folks at Ubiquiti, which looked at attention metrics and then looked at overlaying uh, pricing against those attention metrics, television stacks up incredibly well uh, against digital video. And it, you know, it might not be a surprise to you to hear that you know, some of the measurement companies are further investing in this. So, um, for example, T-Vision, uh, which is a service that's historically only been available uh, in the US, are launching a panel in the UK um, and linking it up with Mike's uh, business to provide a cross-media uh, evaluation of attention metrics. So I think, I think it's a re the data's there, it's available uh, to use. And, and I think it's time to be brave and take a look at uh, some of that. The other piece around attention is, is just, also... Just quickly, because we get some okay, audience right, questions okay. in as well. But oh, so um, I'd better flip on then. Yeah. So, so the other piece is, is attribution. Uh, so the third A of the, the three A's I put in that, that document was about attribution. The technology is there. The capability is there. You've got, you're going to hear from some of the vendors, I think, uh, this afternoon in, in the space. But... You know, attribution for television has never been more uh, available. Uh, I would encourage um, networks and, and their clients to, in, to engage with it. It's at the moment being very heavily driven by, uh, let's call them di direct consumer advertisers, and, and it could be more broadly used. Okay, we've got any audience questions? No, okay, all right, yeah. I think, I think there are numerous opportunities, Mike. I mean, when, you, when you're dealing with large-scale deterministic data, there are, there are ways in which that bridge can be built between the media exposure um, and the uh, actual product consumption, which is what the majority of those services do, whether that be through Tesco in the context of Dunhumby or, or a multiplicity of retail plays, um, as it is with IRI. I think it will get harder in some, in some contexts. I think people need to adapt the methodologies. I also think that we will see more market mix modeling, higher level uh, analysis. I think that's inevitable um, as a function. And I think the other thing, I think we also need to be a little bit honest with ourselves as an industry. I think you know when, when digital came along, everybody sort of thought we were going to have this fantastic path to purchase analysis where we could see every single individual exposure to every media activity and then plot. Uh, how a consumer navigates right the way through to, to purchase into the shopping basket. And, and that never really happened. It was always bits of it that we could see. We can never get that holistic picture. Okay, got time for one more quick question, which requires a quick response. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, so I've got, I've got one more <laughs> quick question for Ian then. Um, sure. I mean, these sort of me, um, private equity investment like Goldman Sachs, you quoted 325 million into iSpot, yeah. a 16 billion bid for Nielsen. I mean, is this based on the assumption that these people also have a contribution to cross-media measurement or are they just interested in the, the cross-platform measurement? Uh, <laughs> it's private equity, so they're interested in the return mm. <laughs> and, what get, and what gets them it. And that doesn't mean to be a flippant answer. Mm. I think it's essentially sort of what they see as the biggest opportunity moving forwards. So I, th I, I think you know, when it's, I think there was also as well an element, uh, it's sort of I suspect also as well data that came into play that people thinking you've got a lot of data and that potentially could be useful as well. Um, I think when sort of uh, for P at the moment, I think if you were to 
if you were to get PE in this whole debate, their sort of view would probably be, you know, that they would probably nod their heads, but they really wouldn't have much to, to contribute in terms of that. I don't think they are thinking that, that far ahead with things. Okay. You know, I think their sort of view is, this could be interesting. There's obviously a lot of talk about it. There's potentially a lot of data there. We like the fact the SVOD services have got in, and therefore there needs to be something that's done sort of with there. And all these initiatives that are coming around, you know, we've got capital to invest, let's invest in that way. I don't think there is any sort of big strategic plan that is driving private equity's interest in, the, in this. Okay. Andy, you want to say something? Yeah, 30 on seconds. It, on a more micro level, uh, a number of those companies invested because they're targeting a $2 billion, 40% EBITDA business called Nielsen. Mm -hmm. um, they're also seeing the growth of attribution uh, opportunities in companies mm -hmm. like iSpot. So I think there's an element of targeting from that point of view as well. Okay, lovely. All right, well, unfortunately, we're out of time. So thank you very much, both of you. Yeah. And, um, well